This is the first of three videos on databases. I'll try not to make them too long. Use them to revise and to get the basic theory. So this first video is all going to be about the keywords we need to use to describe a database on a computer. So data is information that we want to store. So that could be a name, an address, a date of birth, could be a high school, a favorite color, postcode, anything at all. And we use a database to store that data. Now a database could be using paper. The important thing is the data has to be organized so we can use a computer or we can use filing cabinets and paper. If we're using paper, we would put names alphabetically by surname. That way you could easily find somebody whose surname begins with the letter D. Computers organize the, the, the data in a different way. So we've got some important keywords that a computer uses to help set up and create a database. These are fields, records, and tables. So let's have a look at those. The first one we've got is fields. So let's use an example of a pizza takeaway business. Everybody likes pizza. And we want to store the following data for our customers. So their four names, their surnames, their address, their favorite topping, and the number of pizzas they've ordered. Now, the information that we want to store, these separate pieces of information, they become our fields and we use them as headings for the top of this table. So we've got full name, surname, address, favorite topping, or fave topping, and number ordered. Now, these column headings here, as I said, are the fields and they set out where the data is going to be stored. So all the four names will appear underneath four names and the full name field or the surnames will be in the surname field. So the fields act as labels for our database, helping us know where the data stores. That way, if we want to search for somebody's surname, we'll just tell the software to look in the surname field. So they help us know where we can find the data. We know all the full names will be in the full name field, all the surnames in the surname field. Okay, that's fields. Next keyword is record. So let's add some data to our database. Here we have Fred Blogs, 12 Oak Street, ham, favorite topping of ham, and 12 pieces have been ordered. Now, that's one complete, complete set of data for one of the people that we're storing in our database. And we call a complete set of data a record. So we have one record. Let's add some more records. So here, here, here we have Kim Wan, Four Tree Lane, favorite topping peppers, number order 10. Let's add another record, and another record, and another record, and another record. So we now have six complete sets of data, or six records. How many records do we have? Well, we just said six. Okay, last of the three main keywords is tables. So we've added all our customers to our database. We've got our fields at the top, telling us what information is stored in each column. And those fields and records together create what we call a table. So we have one table here storing our customer information, customer table. Now, if we had a bigger database, we may actually have another table perhaps for our staff. We may have another table which might be storing information to do with our kitchen and the ingredients that we're storing and our anything else that's linked to our business. But the important thing is all our customers are in our customer table. There we have one table. Let's do a quick review of fields, records, and tables. So um, you can pause the video perhaps. How many fields are in this database? So you can pause the video, have a think, come back for the answer. So we have got full name, surname, address, favorite topping, and number ordered. That is five fields. Now we have, next question, how many records? So again, if you want to pause the video, have a think, come back, see the answer. So we've got how many complete sets of information? So we've got this one, two, three, four, five, and six complete sets of information. So we have six records in this database. Last question, how many tables do we have? So um, fairly straightforward one. You've probably already said, well, we've got one table. We have one table which contains the fields, and all of our records for this particular set of information on our customers. So we have one table. There we go. Okay, we're not quite done. There's one more important keyword. We're going to extend the keyword field and we're going to say key field. So because there can be people with the same full name, address, favorite topping, number of pizza, pizzas ordered. So 
people could have the same surname, sorry, forename, surname, same address, favorite topping, number ordered. It's possible to have two records exactly the same. We don't have two exactly the same. You can see we've got Fred Bloggs here, 12 Oak Street, ham, and 12 pizzas ordered. We've got another Fred Bloggs. It's perfectly reasonable for that to happen. 12 Oak Flats, tiny bit different than the address, still got the same period of topping, same number of pizzas ordered. So it'd be quite difficult to tell those two Fred Bloggs apart. So have a think, how can we add something? How can we add perhaps a field to this database that will allow us to tell all of our records apart? If you wanna have a pause, have a little think, come back and then press play and we'll see the answer. Okay, so we need a way of telling each record apart. We do this by adding a key field. We just need a field that will allow us to uniquely identify each record. So easiest solution is to use a number. So we set a field called customer number each customer now has a unique number. So if we come back to our Fred Bloggs's, we've got customer number one, which is a Fred Bloggs, and customer number three. That way we can actually tell which Fred Bloggs is which. And when we create the key field, we'd actually create some rules that would stop us having two key fields, uh, sorry, two of these key field numbers the same. So if somebody tried to enter, say, um, on our next customer, which would, should be customer number seven, but if they try to put in customer one again, the rule would tell us we have an error. You can't have two customer numbers the same. Right, so thank you very much. That's the end of this first video. The next video we'll look at SQL, which is how we can start to program a database. Okay, thank you very much.